Hey gang, Scott here. I've just returned from a workshop in Acadia National Park as I record this. Had a wonderful time with a great group of photographers. And as I was returning home, you know, long flights and so forth, I like to think about the workshop and some of the themes that bubbled up over the course of our five days together. And I but I put together a few of them and share them here. So there were a few things that seemed to come up um, either over and over as uh, recurring themes or, you know, just um, poignant observations. And so let's go through them. I got five for you. And the first is glow looks. We actually talked quite a bit about glow looks during the workshop. Uh, you know, why do people like them? When do we use them in landscapes? I have a separate video about how I like to use glow looks, but uh, the, the key takeaways when you're shooting something like autumn foliage, uh, you know, it sometimes is nice to add a little bit of that dreamy ethereal feel to the trees but not necessarily, you know, the tree trunks or any rocks that are around because, you know, those types of things don't normally glow. So making sure to use some type of masking, a luminosity mask is a great place to start. Check the links below. I've got a video about glow looks there that'll help you out. Now the second one, this was kind of a, during the last day that we uh, have together, we do a photo share so everyone can see everyone else's work. And it's really illuminating to see how many different interpretations of a scene there are. Well, one thing stood out to me in particular is the power of a crop. And uh, I'll show you what I mean with, uh, with one of my photos here. A scene from one of the carriage roads looks like this. And there's this bit of window where you can see out to the ocean. And as uh, we were reviewing one of the person's photos that was similar to this, kind of look at it going, you know, it kind of feels, feels, you know, heavy, uh, you know, bottom heavy, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. And we did one simple thing and just cropped. And then the photo became completely different. It's a lot more of an intimate story. It's really just punching in on the, the real essence of the photo. And that was simply done with a crop. You know, can you do this out in the field in camera? Of course, but sometimes you may not do that. You're overwhelmed. I know this is the kind of thing I struggle with too, because I'm much more of a wide angle guy, you know, include lots of context. And if I don't have a foreground subject right near my camera, sometimes I can forget about that. So you know, the power of a crop is really useful. And that, uh, that kind of stumbles into the third item, which is not overlooking the details. So again, during the photo share, several other photographers had wonderful shots of close-ups of leaves, you know, either looking up at a collection of leaves to the sky and the tree above, uh, small collections of leaves floating in a still pond. Now, these are the types of things that I need to grow. And that's, uh, that's, I guess this is why I'm bringing it up because I know it speaks to me as an area that I can grow in is paying attention to the smaller details. You know, the big landscapes are great, but there's a lot of uh, micro landscapes or intimate landscapes that can be had as well. And I'm getting better at that with my seascape work. But when we're out in the forest and things like that, that's a really, really good thing to do for uh, for bringing order to chaos. Forget about what else is going on everywhere and find some small detail to work with. A fourth thing is what I'll call element separation. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this on past in the field videos, but it was a really astute observation by one of the other photographers. We were actually reviewing a photo of mine, this one here, where said, you know, I wish right in this area here, right in the center, that there was a little more separation between this rock here and this here. You know, you want to be able to have, you know, a, a visual pathway through here, you know, in this case, probably on a kayak or something, you know, being able to go into this beachfront. And uh, I did not capture that in this photo. There's reasons for it. I'm not going to go into it. There were some limitations on uh, where you can stand and where you can do things. But being able to get to a higher elevation would give that separation. And one of the places I did succeed with that, use another photo of mine, is with this photo here in Eagle Lake, where I, the three rocks is what really caught my eye in, in this, this composition. And I did make sure to get the tripod high enough where there was a good separation between these first two. You know, in retrospect, looking at this third one back here, you know, maybe could have gotten up a little bit higher as well. Although I didn't want to change too much this perspective on the grasses. You know, there's always those trade-offs that we have there. But getting separation of your elements, if you have key elements in a scene that are really, you know, pulling the composition together, making sure those are distinct and complementary. And the fifth thing is the value of a good set of tripod legs. 
you know, our group, we had uh, solid tripods and a couple of folks brought some travel tripods as well. Some of the days we were out and you know, broke those out and tried them. But for a place like Acadia, where you're balancing things on rocks, you've got gusts of wind, you, know, you take a good piece of glass, a heavy body, and put it onto a travel tripod, it becomes top heavy. Certain scenarios, that's not a problem. But uh, we noticed one photographer, uh, not part of our group, at Jordan Pond, we had 20, 25 mile per hour gusts of wind, and this guy's tripod started to get blown over. I mean, a leg was off the ground and it was ready to tip over, and thankfully he caught it. But it was one of these lighter weight travel tripods, but the camera itself is still the heavy piece of gear, made it very top heavy. So having a good solid set of legs really does make a difference for shooting in conditions where you need that. If you're doing you know, more of a you know, an urban walk or it's a, it's a calm day or you're in a more protected environment, not a problem to use the, the travel tripod. But certain situations, you want that solid set of legs to make sure your gear stays stable. You don't have a shake if you're trying to do a long exposure. You don't want your camera you know, falling into a lake or a pond or a stream or anything like that. So there we go. Hopefully some of these will resonate with you and you can use them on your next photo outing. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. Comments below would be great. You got questions about photography, hit me up in the comments, or if you want to keep it private, you can send me a message through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.